early success? How, how did this affect your life? There is no way in which heights didn't affect my life. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it, financially, personally, um, the fact that I was, um, the show was embraced by this community I lived in so long, but lived in anonymously. You know, I wasn't like the mayor of Washington Heights before the show went up. I was just another guy who ordered coffee at the corner store. Um, so, so to see the show be embraced uh, by the community it depicts um, was, was a huge deal for me. But in a lot of ways, in the, in the important ways, nothing has changed. You know, I think the people, lesson people I... People haven't changed, yeah. The people haven't changed. I still ride the train to yeah. and all over New York. And um, for me, the, the lesson is I, I will never write a show that will change my life as much because now I'm in a fortunate position that I get to do what I love for a living. You know, I had a million other odd jobs while I was working on Heights. And, and my goal is to continue to follow my gut because in the Heights came from my gut. You know, it came because I needed to write it. And, and I try to sort of approach every project that way. And they won't, they won't change my life as drastically as in the Heights did. Nothing can. Um, but hopefully they will, they will come from a similar place. You're very active. I'm, I'm switching to a little bit to technology and how it may change um, mm -hmm. the musical art form. I mean, you're very active on Twitter, on YouTube. You po posted, you have videos of you uh, that's available. On Why? I mean, how do you react to this new technology? Well, a couple of things. I, you know, I got into YouTube um, very early when Heights was off Broadway. And that was really my way in because two things. One, you know, in the Heights had to appeal to regular theater goers. This is a crazy statistic, but it's true. The average Broadway theater goer is a white woman between 45 and 55 years old, and her income is $135,000 a year. That is not who lives in Washington Heights. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that woman's got to come to the show and love it and tell her friends, because that's the backbone of what supports Broadway. And so, you know, the, the advertising company and, and our producers were in charge of getting those people to the show. My, I felt it was my job to let people in my neighborhood know, young people, people who liked hip hop or Latin music, to say, hey, there's a Broadway show that you will like. Um, and it's worth the way too much money you'll have to spend on a ticket. Um, so I started making these little viral videos. We spoofed High School Musical, we spoofed Spring Awakening, just, and, they, and as I was in the show and doing eight shows a week, they became my creative outlet. Um, so I treated that, you know, I worked just as hard on our Jay-Z spoof uh, for, for YouTube as I did on In the Heights. It really became another creative outlet for me that also became sort of this way of, of celebrating the show and, and, and giving back to the fans. And, um, and then Twitter is like the most dangerous drug in the world. If you're a performer, an audience, whenever you want it, in your pocket, <laughs> is the worst thing you could give someone. I mean, it is like... Just, it's really bad. I'm learning to use it in moderation. But, you know, we're all in the performing arts because we didn't get enough hugs as a kid. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a hole that will never be filled and, and all the applause in the world <laughs> isn't going to fill it. So to give, uh, to give us um, a direct pipeline, yeah. um, you know, I'm still navigating how that can be fun. I, 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 now I post, um, uh, through Twitter, I've posted YouTubes of me as a little kid. Um, singing alone in my room. I'm really glad YouTube wasn't around when I was a little kid because I would be one of those kids who was famous for doing some stupid dance in their room. Um, but I can post those because I know that kid turned out okay. <laughs> well, all this technology is changing, um, changing our reality so yeah. much. I mean, how do you see it affecting the work Broadway, the work musical theater, and then I guess how do you see it impacting the, the future? Well, you know, I think what as as exciting and fun as YouTube and Twitter and all these things are in terms of connecting us, none of it can replace the feeling of sitting in a theater and seeing a musical number that literally makes everyone's neck hair stand on end. And the feeling of being in a dark room watching magic happen on stage, first of all, it's very rare. Um, but nothing replaces it. You will never get that feeling watching a musical number in a little box alone in your room on your computer. You just can't replicate it. And I get a lot of requests, a lot of Twitters, when is In the Heights coming out on DVD? Uh, we want a concert of the show, and hopefully never. Because to me, there's something so special about sitting and watching a community in a community. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's an enormous amount of fun to play with uh, at YouTube, and there's enormous 
new sort of art forms that pop up. Someone sent me a video of a Lego, an animated Lego version of the end of Act One of our show. That that is like incredible. It must have taken months of work. But but n nothing replaces live theater. You know, when the robots take over, you know, when Terminator 2 comes true, you know, our most basic art form will be sitting in the dark and telling each other stories, and, and nothing can replace that. Fantastic. Let me, what, last question is uh, about Stephen Sondheim, somebody who, whose work I've also followed a lot. Uh, you worked with him, and you're working on, are you working on two musicals or finished? Uh, well, I'm working on some musicals of my own. I, I worked with him in two different ways, actually. I did um, Spanish translations for the Broadway revival of West Side Story. So I translated some of the Spanish, some of the dialogue into Spanish and some of his lyrics into Spanish uh, with his input and, and blessing. And that was an enormous amount of fun. Um, and, then the, uh, and then most recently, I was in a, um, an encores production of Merrily We Roll Along, which is one of Sondheim's really like most beloved scores but yes. didn't run very long on Broadway yes. only ran 16 performances and so uh, I was directed by James Lapine and we had this you amazing cast oh. I was in it I played uh, Charlie Kringus who was a lyricist yes. which in a way is even more autobiographical a role for yeah. me than Usnavius uh, to play a, a lyricist who has early success and and you go through that whole life experience um, so it, it was fun to work as one of his actors um, it was, in a way, it was very different to, to get to work on, on his piece in that way, and much more personal, in a way. Are you doing working as well, or no? That's oh, yeah, I wrote two new songs for working, um, and that's being licensed sort of everywhere now. Um, you know, that, that score has many different authors. It's uh, James Taylor and Craig Cornelia. Stephen Schwartz is sort of the, um, the guy who put all that together, and so he asked me to write two new songs for the revival, and there's actually some Tagalog in one of the songs I wrote, uh, for it, I wrote, um, there's a song, you know, there, there was a song in the original version called Un Mejor Día Vendra um, that was sort of about the immigrant experience and it was about migrant workers. And we kind of wanted to update what is the new immigrant uh, experience in the States. And so I wrote a song called um, A Very Good Day. And it's um, a duet between a Hispanic uh, elderly care worker um, and a Filipina nanny. Um, and they, uh, basically sing about the very sort of delicate job. It's a very tricky job. I interviewed several um, while I was writing the song because you're doing family work. You're doing the job. You know, every immigrant does the job that no one else wants to do. That's how you get a foothold. Um, and so, but it's stickier when your job is to provide love and care while you have a family at home that isn't getting that love and care because you're here. And that's what the song is about. And so, um, uh, it's very, it's very moving because uh, they, they, there's points where they're, they're both singing their, their patients to sleep, and he breaks into Spanish and she breaks into Tagalog, um, oh, and it's, very... it's a cool song. It's a, it's a tearjerker. It resonates here. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I want to ask you about the Filipino roots to, in the Heights. You said it had. Well, to... yeah. Um, you know, um, my in my initial production, uh, the, the in college, uh, the girl who played Nina uh, grew up in Subic. Uh, and uh, her name is Aileen Payumo, and she was amazing in the show. And, uh, and she's sort of one of my best friends, so I know all of this stuff, like random things about the Philippines. You know, I can, I can curse up a storm in Tagalog, and I can say I love you in a lot of different ways in Tagalog, and that's pretty much all I got. And I wrote a paper on Mount Pinatubo for, <laughs> for, uh, for a science class. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I have this sort of, um, because of Aileen, who's, who's one of my best friends, um, you know, I've always wanted to come here um, and, uh, and sort of experience it. So this is really a, a, a circle closing in a lot of ways. What's going to be, what's next for you now? Uh, what's next for me? I'm, I'm a co-composer, uh, lyricist on Bring It On the Musical, which is on tour in the United States. Um, and we're hopefully going to bring that into New York. I think we're, we're waiting on a theater. Um, but we're, uh, you know, th the tour has been going amazingly, and it really is like nothing you've seen before. It's full on... Um, cheerleading routines mixed with dance. You know, they're singing and dancing, and then we throw these girls 30 feet in the air. I have no idea how they do it. Um, it's, it's 11 world-class cheerleaders uh, with uh, these actors who are triple threats and telling this really compelling story by Jeff Witte, who is the book writer for Avenue Q. Um, so it's been a lot of fun. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much thank for you. speaking with us. We've been speaking with Lin-Manuel Miranda, the creator of In the Heights, Tony Award winner, Grammy Award winner. He is in Manila. Uh, Please, his Twitter handle is uh, Lynn Lynn underscore, underscore Manuel. Manuel. 
um, and you can you can post your questions to him and on to Facebook. Do it, buddy. Thanks for <laughs> staying to Talk Thursday.